Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I feel so honored to be with you all today. And I know, mashallah, there's so many programs going on. And mashallah, it's early because last night the programs ended pretty late. And I just wanted to take this moment to thank you for being here. And today, I wanted to briefly address something that many of you might be feeling at this current moment. Our time has actually been labeled as the age, Jazakillah khairan. The age of loneliness. It's estimated that one out of every five women in the United States are clinically lonely, persistently lonely. And that's very sad because we live in a time unlike our ancestors before us and those who came from before us, where we can pull out our smartphones and can FaceTime, video call someone who's on the other side of the planet. And we can hear and see them live. And we have all of these social media applications and means of connecting, but many of us feel disconnected. And so, it's very alarming. Why is it very alarming? And why is it something that we have to discuss? We have to discuss it because a lot of the new research is telling us that social isolation, that feeling of loneliness, is detrimental to our physical health. It's also detrimental to our emotional and mental well-being and can affect our spiritual health and our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, as Muslims, as an ummah, are we supposed to feel lonely? Is this something that's supposed to be going on in our communities? Should any one of our sisters ever feel lonely? No, why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us the complete opposite. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for example, when he would go to the masjid and someone was missing, he would ask about them. And we all know the famous incident when he came to the masjid sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day and the woman who used to clean the masjid wasn't there. And so he didn't see her. What did he do? Did he just go, oh, well, she's not here today. Maybe we'll see her tomorrow. No, he asked about her. And when he asked about her, they informed him that she had passed away and that they had performed the janazah upon her. And he got angry. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you let me know? Because guess what? Even when our soul departs our body, at that time, we shouldn't be lonely because we have our Islamic rituals of what? Of janazah, where the community comes out and does what? And prays for that person. And so, how can we combat loneliness? Because in this room, there's about maybe 150 sisters. So you know what that means? About 30 of us in this room right now are experiencing loneliness. And so how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really combat that and really remove that from society? And inshallah today I'm going to talk to you about a few ways that we can do that. First is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
He taught us beautiful manners and etiquettes. He taught us to say salams, but not just to say salams, that greeting to those that we know. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, specifically said to say salams to those you know and those you don't. Isn't that beautiful? One time I was grocery shopping, and as I was grocery shopping, um, I was at the checkout line. And a sister in hijab passed by, and I, have, I don't know that sister. And I said, assalamu alaikum to her. And she said, wa alaikum assalam. And she came over to me, she shook my hand, and she gave me a big hug. The lady who was doing the checkout was like, oh, is that your friend? And I said to her, no, I've never met her before. And she's like, then how are you talking to each other? How are you greeting each other? How are you giving each other a big hug? I said, because we're Muslims. And in Islam, we're all sisters. It doesn't matter if I've never met you before. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter what language you speak. If you can't say assalamu alaikum to me because you speak in another language, the Prophet ﷺ said to do what? To shake hands. The sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ is that when you greet someone is to say salams and to shake their hands. Shaking hands is universal. You don't even need to be able to speak to do that. And you know what's so beautiful about shaking hands? There's a lot of new research that's being done on the power of skin-on-skin -skin touch. And did you know that there was a study that was done recently where they took women who were experiencing postpartum depression, and I think a lot of us in this room know what I'm talking about. You know, after giving birth and the hormones are all, all out of whack, and so they did a study where they took a group of women and they split them into two groups. They all had just given birth. One group, they gave them antidepressant drugs. The other group, they instructed their partner, their husband, to touch them skin on skin contact for five to 10 minutes every day. And guess what they found out? They found out that the women who were getting that skin-on-skin -skin contact, that touch, they got over their postpartum depression quicker than those who took the antidepressant drugs. SubhanAllah. Look at that. In this room right now, I want you to turn to the person next to you and shake their hand. And you know what the Prophet ﷺ said? He said that when you shake someone's hand, do you know what happens? Your sins fall our sins fall. And then he said, as long as you're holding hands, the sins will keep falling until you move hands. The Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, when they would be walking and there was a tree and they would disconnect hands. You know the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they were very, I don't know, did, did you read in the seerah about how the Prophet really, when he spoke to his Sahaba, he would touch them. We have a hadith where a sahabi would say, the Prophet ﷺ put his arm around me. Or the Prophet ﷺ put his hand on my shoulder. Or the Prophet ﷺ held my hand. Or the Prophet ﷺ came from behind and put his hand on my eyes. Right? We have other hadith where sahaba say, I was sitting next to the Prophet ﷺ and he scooted over until his thigh touched my thigh. His leg touched my leg. Right? And so the Prophet ﷺ, when he's telling us that when you shake hands, your sins are falling, He's doing what? Motivating us to do what? To shake hands and touch. Why? Because all of us want our sins to fall. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us how to break that, that cycle of loneliness because you greet those you know and those you don't. You shake hand with all of your sisters. You know, even ask them if they want a hug. And I know that might sound alarming to you, but just last week, I was in the car with one of my very close friends, and she's like, Dunya, I really need a hug. SubhanAllah, she's not married, and her parents don't hug her. And she's like, I really need a hug. I wish, and I was like, I'm so sorry I never offered. And since then, I've been thinking, maybe I should start offering when I meet a sister, do you want a hug? And so I did that last night. Last night, when I was speaking at the young Muslims conference. 
And one of the sisters asked if she could take a picture with me, and she looked kind of emotional. And so I asked her, would you like a hug? And she hugged me so tight, subhanAllah. Sometimes we underestimate the power of these small gestures. But the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us not to belittle any good deed, even a smile. Even a smile? When you meet your sister and you say, Assalamu alaikum, and you smile at her and you shake her hand and you give her a big hug, even if she wasn't feeling that great before then, what's going to happen after that? She's going to feel better. And I am speaking from experience. There have been so many days where I wake up not in the best state. And then I go to one of my classes to teach and the sisters say salams to me. They give me big hugs and I forget all about my worries. Subhanallah. So never underestimate that. How else did the Prophet وسلم, teach us to get out of the shackles of loneliness? There is so much emphasis in our beautiful deen on volunteering and giving back to the community, right? We know of all the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the best, most beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is who? The one who brings the most benefit to others. And the best and most beloved deed to Allah is to make another Muslim happy, to make someone smile. The Prophet ﷺ, he also taught us that one of the best deeds is to feed someone who's hungry, to remove their worries, to help them with their debt, right? Those are things that you don't do at home. Those are things that you do outside and you have contact with that person. And if that person is feeling lonely, guess what you just did? You helped them a little bit. And guess what? If you're the one who is feeling lonely, you helped yourself a lot, actually. You know, subhanAllah, psychologists from the beginning of the development of psychology st were studying and researching emotions like sadness and anxiety and fear. And about 40 years ago, they thought to themselves, why don't we study different types of emotions, the more positive emotions? And positive psychology was born. And that's when they started studying emotions like happiness, gratitude, altruism. And guess what they found out? They found out that one of the quickest ways and the best ways that you can increase your happiness levels is by volunteering and helping someone else. So if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling isolated, reach out to Ikna sisters. They have, mashallah, so many volunteering opportunities where you can, inshallah, engage in others, help others, and inshallah, that will be doing what? It will be nurturing not only your spiritual health and your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also your own mental and emotional well-being. How else did Islam come and kind of erase that loneliness? Think about our beautiful prayers. Did you know that the mothers of the believers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all, used to lead women in their homes in salah? Aisha radiallahu anha used to lead women in her home in salah. So salah is a community. Even when we recite our salah, what do we say? Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Deen. Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. We ask Allah as a group. Oh Allah, we worship you, not I worship you, so that you could always know that you're not alone. Ya Allah, we ask you to guide us, not I ask you to guide me. Even in our prayers, subhanAllah, which is something we do five times a day. 
Think about all the virtues of going to the masjid and learning. When you go to the masjid, is it just by yourself and you're learning from yourself? No, it's a group. And the Prophet وسلم, said something very amazing. He said, whoever leaves their home to go to the masjid with the intention to learn something or teach something gets a reward like that of hajj. And we all know that anyone who takes a path seeking knowledge, what happens? Allah makes their path to Jannah easy. And so is seeking knowledge something that you do in isolation? Not at all. How else? Checking up on your neighbors. <laughs> there are so many ahadith where the Prophet wasallam taught us to be kind and good and check on our neighbors. He even said that when you're making soup, add some extra water so that you can send a plate to your neighbor. That's interesting because he didn't say your poor neighbor. He didn't say your needy neighbor. He said your neighbor, regardless of their situation. Because maybe they're financially doing great, but maybe emotionally, that's where they need it. And even the Prophet wasallam said, Jibreel kept telling me about the rights of the neighbor until I thought that the neighbor would inherit from us when we pass away. And so check on your neighbors. You know, just go over, ring the doorbell, take some flowers, bake some cookies, take some of your delicious biryani, right? And just say, hi, even if they're not Muslim, hello. You know, I was just thinking about you today. And I know that I've been living here for the past five years and we haven't really talked. And I was just wanting to change that. And I thought, you know, today's the day. And so I made some dinner and I thought you might like to try our cuisine. And to those who feel like they are lonely, remember that you are really never alone. And remember, we recite very often Surah Duha, Wal Duha, Wal Layli Ida Saja, Ma Wadda'aka Rabbuka Wa Ma Qala. You know, once the Prophet felt lonely. He felt lonely. He felt lonely because he stopped receiving revelation. And when he felt that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, You're not alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells each and every one of us, We're not alone. He also tells us that he's nearer to us and closer to us than our jugular vein, right? Think about Musa alayhi salam. What did he say? He said, Kalla, inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. When he was in an impossible situation, even though he wasn't alone physically, he was alone emotionally at that time. Because when he was in front of the sea and he had... Bani Israel with him and Fir'aun and his army behind them. He wasn't alone physically, but he was alone. He felt alone emotionally. Why? Because his people started screaming at him. Look at what you did. That's it. We're done. Musa, we should have never listened to you. We're, that's it. We're done. You just killed us all. The sea's in front of us. Army's behind us. And what did he say? He reminded himself, I'm not alone. But was he alone physically? No. I'm not alone emotionally. Allah is with me. And because Allah is with me, Allah will find a way out for me. And so anytime you feel alone, anytime you feel like this loneliness is sinking in, remind yourself that first and foremost, Allah is with you. And start to remember Him. Right? The Prophet wasallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever Whichever one of us remembers Allah, what happens? Allah remembers us, right? And so you're never truly alone. And if you're feeling alone and you've remembered Allah, call someone, reach out to someone, reach out to a friend, reach out to a family member. Don't allow shaitan to allow those feelings to sink in and take roots, right? Don't allow that. And let's say, well, all my friends are at work. All my family members are busy. 
Go to the masjid. Go to the masjid. You're bound to find a sister there. If not, find some kind of relief organization, call them up and say, I want to help out in some way. If you can't find an Islamic one, volunteer at a homeless shelter. Go to a woman's shelter, even if they're non-Muslim. Do something. Be proactive. And that's what the Prophet wasallam taught us. And know, and know that that will not only help you physically and emotionally, but there's also so much reward in that. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his greatest names and his greatest attributes, the names that if we ask him by it, he subhanahu wa ta'ala answers our call. Only he knows what each and every one of us is going through. And on this blessed moment, during this blessed day, in this blessed gathering, I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve all of your distresses, to replace all of your sadness with happiness, all of your fears and your anxieties with tranquility and serenity. And I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala the same way that he gathered us here today, that he gathers us all in Jannat al-Firdaus. Ameen. And jazakumullah khairan for listening so attentively. And if you do see me around, I do love shaking hands and I do love hugs and I would love to meet you all, insha'Allah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.